Well, you've been doing some canning. I have. Been a busy week. Yep. Green beans. Mama's sweet pickles. Sweet pickles. Got them cucumbers coming in. Oh, yeah. And potatoes. Yep. And I did do some green beans and potatoes. You did. But Which did, you've always done before. Right, but I've never really done just potatoes. Mm -hmm. But with these potatoes, you could do potato salad. You could do in your beef stew. You could do garlic mashed potatoes. Anyway, I just felt the... Felt the urge. A gut feeling to do potatoes this year. Yep. All right. And look here, wrong guy. Mm, fried okra, folks. Your favorite. My you know, favorite. This is the third, third time I've cooked it. Yep. I believe this is the best. Really? Yeah, you know you have to get back in that routine. Yeah, you get back in the groove. In, in the groove? Mm hmm What you think? Yep, I think so. Welcome everyone to the Road by Road Garden Show, best dead gun garden show out there on the internet and the radio everywhere. How about that? Everywhere. 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 Yeah, glad to have you this evening. We got something special to talk about. We're talking about sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. And why you should be growing sweet potatoes and how and all the good juicy stuff about sweet potatoes. In the meantime, we're going to be snacking on some fried okra. I know. So for the people out there that's never fried fried okra before, just give them a little tidbit because there's some secrets to doing this. Okay. So the secret to me is to cut it up, salt it, season it, and let it sweat. Yep. Let's, How long? Today about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then I put half cornmeal and half flour. Mm -hmm. And then fry it on high. But you can't, I mean, you gotta be careful because you don't want to burn it. You don't want to fry it too quick. Yep, and my mother always says you can't stir it. She took, you take your spatula to put it in there and you, and flip, you flip it. Flip it. One time. Yeah. And that's it. The first ones I did this year was a little burnt. Yeah. You remember that? Got your grease a little yeah. too hot. You're getting back in your game, girl. And then Sunday, it wasn't mm -mm. quite there, but this is perfect. Yep. So this is a variety called cow horn that we're growing. We haven't grown cow horn in several years, so we like to switch it up a little bit. Cow horn is our variety of the year. Seems to be pretty good so far. It's supposed to be a little more forgiving the longer it gets, but you don't seem to think so. No. There were some that was probably four inches mm -hmm. long that was a little tough. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good deal. Flowers. 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 You got your own flowers as well. I got my own flowers here. Zenias. Ain't they pretty? Tell everybody what varieties these are. These are the lime and the white. Mm -hmm. And they are just... Popping. Popping. I love to put these together because it's just so yep. crisp, clean, yep. Yep. pretty. I just planted some zinnias over the weekend. Another plant of zinnias. Oh, and then look at this. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sunflowers. We have chocolate. We have plum. We have gold light. We have peach. And then we have this variety that I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, that is a nice one. There. I think it's actually some volunteers that might have cross pollinated. It came back up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because we don't have anything that looks like that. Yeah. Could be. It's almost like a teddy bear and a gold light yeah. cross. Stepchild. Stepchild, but it's yeah. gorgeous. Flowers are coming in, folks. It's that time of the year where you got to have flowers mingling in with your food garden. Mm -hmm. We talk about food garden all the time, but flowers is definitely a part of it. For the pollinators, for the enjoyment of the flowers, and to lift other people's spirits as well. So we're probably going to take one of these right here and give away to somebody after we get through the show. I got somebody in mind. You do. I do. Mm -hmm. Somebody. Yep. Maybe brighten their day a little bit. All right. So let's talk about new variety for this week. Boston pickling cucumber. We've had a little trouble sourcing some of the. Uh, Turn it around. Some of these cucumbers. We got Boston pickling in right now. We're pretty much. We won't be getting any new varieties in much for the next probably three months and the cycle starts over again we're going to be doing i say we cameron and i and i by myself probably is going to be doing a lot of traveling in the next few months picking out new varieties we're going to some trials to look at we're going to iowa to a trial up there to see mm -hmm. some things going on 
We're also, I will be probably traveling up to upstate New York and maybe Wisconsin to look at some more trials. I may accompany you. you may have to, but that's going to yeah. be really interesting. We got some really interesting traveling to do, look at some new varieties that I just get so excited about. Mm -hmm. I love doing that. What's going on in your garden? Oh, man. Okay. Got sweet potatoes planted Sunday, and we're going to mm -hmm. dig into that deep today. Got zinnias, corn's fixing to be ready. The garden's at its Cucumbers, full. Cucumbers. Crazy. It's a green potential. beans. Let me talk about those green yeah. beans. Hulse green blaze. Hulse green blaze. I have picked them three times in the last week. Mm -hmm. Can three separate cannings. Well, that's in there. Yeah, that's the, these are yeah, the mirror. Um, and we had a little bit of a heat wave last week. We did. And we had been what two weeks without rain. These things have produced like crazy through the heat, through the drought. You can pick them every other day. I'm really impressed. And we ate some last night. We did. And they taste really good. And they do well for canning too because see how straight they are. That's mm -hmm. really conducive to, uh, to canning. It's a good straight bean. Yeah. I tend mm -hmm. to uh, just snap off my ends and leave them whole. Mm -hmm. I think they're pretty like that. And most people that's grown beans before know what I'm talking about. There is zero, zero pressure on this whole green blaze. Most time mm -hmm. we get some what we call rust on the leaves. These things are clean as they can be. I've not had any rust. There's not been any stings, any bug bites. Mm -hmm. um, the bushes, sometimes when you, after you pick them the first time, they kind of get a little, when you fondle them a little yeah. bit, they mm -hmm. get a little wimpy, but yep. these have bounced r back real well, well. that bush is very, Stands up very erect. Mm -hmm. Speaking of canning green beans, mm -hmm. I got, I've had a little issue this week. Yeah. So there should be a video out this week on YouTube about my process of canning green beans, but I also had a little short video on a different social media platform. Talk. The Tiki Talk. The talk. Tiki Talk. And um, had a, quite a few comments about whether they should be water bath or process via a pressure can. In other words, people were going against, they were arguing about what you were right. doing. And you I didn't take it too, too kindly. Well, no, I, I really don't. Usually the comments don't bother me. Mm -hmm. I just like blow them off. But what really bothered me is several people said that you did not need to process these in a pressure can or that you could do a water bath. And I totally disagree with that. If you've been doing that for years and that's your way of doing it, that's okay. But when somebody says for your newbies out there, don't listen to Mama Hoss. To Mama Hoss. <laughs> um, so to be safe when you can these beans, you need a temperature of 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which you can own for safety to kill all the microorganisms. And you can only accomplish that through a pressure canner. So my information is going out there to help people. And especially for the new canners out there, for the new canners out there, don't deviate. And for, if you're a rebel canner, that's fine. But don't come on my page. Mm -hmm. And tell the newbies what to do. Struck because a nerve there, did it? It did struck a nerve. Because the newbies of all people should be following the recommendations for canning mm -hmm. and not deviation for the recipe. Mm. Okay, Ooh. I'm through. You got off your soapbox. That was good though. Yeah. yeah. You, got, you can through with that. I'm through with that. Oop, you got to watch those comments sometimes. They get to you. Well, they didn't really get to me except for somebody telling a newbie they shouldn't be listening to me. And I'm not a professional, but I'm very experienced mm -hmm. in canning. Been doing it a while, have you? I've been doing it a while. Mm -hmm. Have they have they been a growing season in the last 30 years you didn't can something of it? Can you think of one? Mm -hmm. No. So you have been doing it a while, have you? Well, I would say I've been doing it... I'm tell you age now. Be careful. Okay, I'm 56. I, and I helped my grandmother all those years. And my mother mm -hmm. and my grandmother is going on 96. And my mother is going on 77. 
So I have been doing it quite a while. Yep. All right, all right. Let's move on. Move on, move on. I'm about to eat all that bowl of there when it was on your soapbox. Fried okra. Let's talk about sweet potatoes, okay? Uh -huh. Sweet potatoes, and I got a video coming out as we're talking about sweet potatoes. And and we're going to talk about sweet potatoes because I, I feel like sweet potatoes don't get the respect they need, but they fit a great slot in your food garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times we got, example, we got cabbage, brassicas, we got broccoli. We had a late crop of broccoli that came along. And when those crops get through, you got two choices. You can put a cover crop in, or you can put another food garden crop in. And these sweet potatoes fit great in that slot. Cause here in the South, we can plant sweet potatoes. Now I don't recommend planting them early, but we can plant sweet potatoes mid-May. We can plant them in June. And I have planted them all the way up to the 4th of July. The problem getting those late crops is you're gonna have a problem getting your slips or your plants. But mid-May is a perfect time for us in the South to put those sweet potatoes in. And a lot of times we have crops, you may even have a summer squash crop coming off. We had an early summer squash crop. I planted mm. some in late February. And we're gonna get through with them. Well, now you can put something back in that spot. Sweet potatoes fits the bill. Mm -hmm. So you can go right behind your potatoes, your onions, your brassicas. You can. Yep, you know, any of those Irish potatoes, you know, they always, we dug ours two weeks ago. So you could follow it behind that, which will not be my ideal uh, rotation, but you could because they're not in the same family. You could rotate sweet potatoes behind Irish potatoes. I think it's probably a better rotation there, but you could do that. So you know, sweet potatoes probably in the last, what, five or six years, they've uh -huh. kind of been on the rise. Mm -hmm. Why do you think? Well, it, I think it's called sweet potato fries. <laughs> I do. A lot of people love the sweet potato fries. No, I think it's because of fad diets. They think sweet potatoes, and they do have less carbs, are healthier choice than regular potatoes. Mm. So a lot of restaurants now have on their menu, you can order sweet potato versus a baked potato. Right. Or sweet potato fries versus the regular french fries. No, yeah, and these different... They put more preparation in the ways you can cook them and, and mm -hmm. present them, I guess you yeah. say. But the sweet potato fries have come on last few years, you have to admit that. Yeah. yeah a lot of people, a lot of restaurants even serve mm -hmm. sweet potato fries now. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about when you need to plant them. Mid-May for here in the south, and you can plant them all the way up to Fourth of July. The best crop I ever made, I believe, was planted Fourth of July. Very hard to get slips. Mm -hmm. What you're going to find is most of the places that sell slips are going to be out of stock on them come June. So if you don't have them in the ground by then, you're going to have a hard time. So they're a tropical and they... They run, love the heat. They love the heat. And the they can soil. take the dry weather as well. Mm -hmm. Although, I will tell you this, I always put drip irrigation underneath my sweet potatoes. If you've been following us very long, you know I don't always, or very seldom do I put drip irrigation under my Irish potatoes. But I always put it underneath my sweet potatoes, and there's two reasons for that. Of course, it's hot and dry, and we're more prone to drought during the hot summertime. Mm -hmm. Also... When those sweet potatoes start moving out and vining over, it's hard to get that fertilizer in there. If you're not going to use drip irrigation, you have to band them with fertilizer pretty heavy before they start that real creeping, where they really creep out there, because you can't get in there to fertilize them. With drip irrigation, we can fertilize through the drip tape there. So that's two reasons I like to use the drip tape with sweet potatoes. All right, question for you. Is sweet potatoes yams? No. Why not? Well, they just two different things. What's a yam? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You told me they were different. They I are different. I'm not. I didn't do a lot of research on this right here, but they uh, they are different. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it there. Google yams versus sweet potatoes. They get different. Yeah, it's let been us a few, know. It's been a while since I looked that up. Do you know that they were used in folk remedies to treat asthma, I did night not know blindness, that. and diarrhea? I did not know that. Mm -hmm. What state grows the most sweet potatoes? Oh, I know this one, North Carolina. Now, we used to grow a lot of sweet potatoes here. Uh -huh. This area, we right here where we at, grew a lot of sweet potatoes. But we had an insect come in called the sweet potato a bee, uh, weevil, excuse me, weevil, sweet potato weevil. Uh -huh. And they uh, quarantined a lot of the states. So we can't ship plants out of Georgia or Florida into other states on kind of the sweet potato weevil. Uh -huh. And then there are other places like Alabama may have certain counties that are quarantined or Louisiana 
or Mississippi may have certain counties that are quarantined. Now they can actually ship the actual finished product, the potato, to a lot of places, but the slips are quarantined, quarantined so you can't slip them out. Do you know my granddaddy raised sweet potatoes? He rented out land and we raised sweet potatoes. You know, we was talking last night, because I planted mine Sunday, and I got down on my hands and knees and planted yours, and, and you you explained to me the way y'all used right. to do it. So, they would get the land ready, it'd be the fresh till soil, and my sister and I would lay the slip down, and then my granddaddy would come behind us with like a, a tobacco stick, a like tobacco that. stick, and punch them down. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't think about that. I got that on my hand and knees and done about that. You should ask. Yep, should have asked. Yep. All right. Let's talk about some recommended varieties here. Now, if you will go to some of the places on the website to sell a lot of these varieties, they, they are they got numerous ones of them. And for you people up north, you're gonna need to grow a shorter season variety than what we do here in the deep south. Most of the varieties are anywhere from 90 days to 110 days. Down here in the south, we can pretty much grow any of them. Now, you guys up north, you don't need to go to the shorter day material, maturity ones because you have that shorter growing season. Because you've got to harvest them before that first frost. Yeah. So down here, we can grow any of them. But I'm going to go over the, and there's lots of them out here, but I'm going to go over the three varieties that I'm the most familiar with. And one of them would be Beauregard. Now, Beauregard is a variety, a newer variety. And any of the guys that's been growing sweet potatoes for a long time will tell you that is the most forgiving variety to grow. So if you're a new gardener, that's the one they always recommend. It's less forgiving, on, I mean, more forgiving on fertility, uh, water and that kind of stuff. It's just the one to grow. It does not have the best flavor to me. I've grown it before. It's not one of my favorites, but I will have to say- It grows well in the north though. Beauregard does? Mm -hmm. That's what it said. Hmm. And, uh, it's a good one, especially if you're starting out. It stores well. It stores well. I knew that it stored well. The second one I'm going to talk about is Covington. Now, this is my favorite one because this is kind of has the best of everything, but it's not the best one at any particular thing. Covington, to me, has pretty high sugar content. Maybe not the highest, but it's a good eating potato. And it makes a good a good potato. They're not knotted up. They, what they call they grade out well. It makes a good-sized potato. Also, it's resistant to root knot nematodes, which is important if you garden a lot in these spots like we do. Nematodes can always be an issue. And um, it's just a good all-around variety to me. It's that's what you planted? That's what I planted. It's sweeter than the Beauregard is, but it's not the sweetest of all of them, but it's, it's a good compromise for okay. me. The next one I've grown before that a lot of people recommend is the Georgia Jets, which is an older variety. It's a 90 day. It's a 90 day, and Georgia Jets probably has the highest sugar. Is it sugar from Georgia? Color. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would, uh, it's got the highest sugar content of any of the ones that I'm familiar with. Deep orange. Yep. But fast it, growing. It's, it's kind of naughty. Up. It don't make the prettiest potato by oh. no means. You know, if you're a homeowner, it's not that big of a deal. You can deal with it. They don't like them. The, the farmers don't like them because they don't grow that great out very well. But it's a very good eating potato. So there you have it. These are the three varieties there. Now, if you go on some of these websites, you can look around there and there's all different kind of them. Now, all that being said, I planted a new one this year. I planted a purple potato. I believe it's called Mashaka, Mashaka, Mashaka. You know how I am with words. I did. I didn't tell you about this, did I? So I planted one row over there, Mashaka. I believe it's Mashaka. It's a purple potato, but the inside of it's kind of white. Now you think it's a Jap Japanese type sweet potato. sweet potato. It is a sweet potato. And they classify it as a Japanese style sweet potato because it's not as sweet, it has more of a nuttier, earthier flavor it's got that white flesh in it instead of that orange flesh but it was developed by uh over in louisiana about lsu i think and uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how it got purple outside and then that white inside i just planted one row of them because i want to try them okay anyway interesting interesting so sweet potatoes are high in all these vitamins mm -hmm. beta carotenes vitamin a what else what other kind of vitamin Vitamin D. D, anything. They're yeah. very healthy for you. It's a great food source. Did you know that also a lot of Asian dishes, they take the vine and stir fry it? No, you talked about that. Yep. We're going to try that this year? We're going to try that this year on our to-do list. We've never done that before. But they stir fry the tender part of the new growth of the vine there. So you got a dual food source you can eat there. You can eat that vine 
as a mm -hmm. stir, or you can wait and harvest a tubular and eat it as well later on. Mm. We've never done that. Yeah, we're going to try something new this year. All right, so let's talk about pests a little bit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's back up and when to plant. Yeah, okay, so uh, here where we at, you can plant in May, June, all the way up to July. Up north, you probably need to get them in probably around June, first part of June. Go ahead and get your slips. Ball. The trick is to plant them early enough that you have enough time to harvest them. Yep. So 90 days down here, we don't have any problem. Not here. If we plant yeah, 4th north. of July, think about this right. 4th of July, we got 4th of August, 4th of September, 4th of October. Yeah. You can plant all the way up to July and be fine here in the south. But north, you probably need to be planting now. Early June, at least. I'd say late. you got to wait until it warms up enough. Mm -hmm. So you got to be late May, early June. Get them in the ground up there. Um, and you can also... A friend of mine told me this right here. He actually does two plantings up. He does one in mid-May and does another one in June. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So you got to come in at different times. Yeah. How about how to plant? How to plant. So I, what I do is I lay my drip tape you off. Have one down there? I don't. Well, I do too. I don't, how about that? I do oh, get some, miracle! Miracle. So Magic. here's a, a sweet potato slip right here. Everyone, everywhere. I don't know if y'all can see this or not, where these little leaves come off there is what they call nodes. And that's where your roots are going to come out of. Now, what this right here is, it's just a cutting of a vine. It's called a slip, but it's just a vine cut off. And you, you can plant it this way. You can lay it down and cover it up. And this is the way I planted some of mine. Right, and you just leave these... Leave the leaves sticking, sticking out. Sticking out. So your granddad, what he would do is he would just poke it there. Mm -hmm. So all this went down into the ground that stayed up. Right. And him stood, and he stood up to do this, and y'all leaned over. <laughs> Where I leaned over, we to do were it. little kids. Or you can do it this way: you can just kind of stick it into the ground up to that node right there, like a lot of, a lot, a lot of people do. Just walk through there and stick them down there. So you can do it either way. You want to leave the leaves sticking out there. This is pulled off. The way they grow these things is they take last year's potatoes. They go up there and put them in these rows, which was about 24 to 36 inches wide. And they just pile the potatoes in there. They use something like straw or some type of ground cover to put on top of them. And these things, these potatoes sprout and push up through that straw or ground cover. And they have all this massive vine up there. Then they go in there and cut the vines off. Therefore, you have your slips. And that's what you will buy if you go on the internet and you buy potato slips. This is what you get right here. Now, I've seen people on TikTok and Instagram taking a sweet potato and put it in water. Mm -hmm. Or wrap it in paper towel. Or wrap it in paper towel. That was that word. That's called pre-sprout. Yeah, if you're just doing some for like a root pouch or something like that, that's fine. By the way, I know somebody's going to plant some of these in a root pouch, and I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, who's that? I can't tell you. I you just know that? somebody. Yeah. All right, so this is the way they grow. This is your slips right here. The thing about sweet potatoes is, if you really think about it, that's an ideal homesteader food source because you could take your leftover sweet potatoes plant them in the wintertime and grow your own slips and you never would need to buy slips again if you had yeah. if you wanted to do that i remember my granddaddy digging a hole mm -hmm. and then he would put straw on top and that's how he would get his slips yep yep yeah. so it's an ideal way to do that and maybe share with some of your neighbors so there again it's kind of like our multiplying onion once you get started you get your stock you got it from there on out so, forever. Forever. So you never have to worry about being dependent upon anybody else to get in your root stock again. Well, there you have the slips right there, folks. That's what they look like, and that's the way you would plant them. Now, plant them every 12 inches apart, and that works ideal for our drip tape because our emitters are 12 inches apart. Row spacing, the ideal row spacing between rows is going to be about four feet. What about fertilizer? Fertilizer. Side dress to begin with, or uh, I would I would go in there and put the complete organic in pre-plant, mix it into my soil. That's a good organic fertilizer. It's a hand manure, and then I, I will maybe side dress a little bit, but I'm mostly going to shoot mine through my drip tape. So and you do not prune these; you just let them grow. Just let them grow. Plenty now, of room. They're not really considered heavy, heavy feeders. About three pounds of N per thousand square feet is is going to be about right. Compare that to corn, it takes about half the amount of what corn would take. Mm -hmm. it, it is pretty high need of potassium. So your last number on your fertilizer is K. It does like a lot of K. So if you have a spot in your garden that has a lot of potassium in it, an ideal place to put these sweet potatoes to farm some of that potassium off. 
It's not a big user of phosphorus, but it does need some phosphorus. And you said you put them on drip tape. Mm -hmm. Now, toward the end of the season, a couple weeks before you get ready to harvest them, do you cut the water back so they don't split? I do. I normally cut it back. So I'm after building this big vine, healthy vine, and you'll notice these things are very tolerant of the dry heat. So toward the end of the season, I kind of cut them back and let them harden off a little bit into the soil. It's best if you don't have a lot of rain there at the end. I know we don't have control over the weather, but ideal conditions if it kind of dries off, you don't have a lot of rain when you get ready to harvest them. Watch your days to maturity anywhere from 90 to 110 days, and you're going to start seeing those vines starting to die back a little bit. Go in there at that point when you get ready to harvest, mow them with your lawnmower, your tractor, whatever you got, get those vines out of your way. Go in there with your garden fork, dig up your potatoes. Let them cure. Let them cure. You can't eat them right away. Well, no, and that's the thing. You know, with Irish potatoes, we love to eat them right away. Uh -huh. With these, you really don't, you can't do that because they're what considered green. Those carbs in there have not converted to sugars. So it takes, what, four to Seven six Seven to weeks? ten days in an ideal uh -huh. climate. Yeah, like a, what they call a potato house. A commercial farmer has got this potato house set up, and he's got the exact temperature, which is around 85 degrees, and he's got 85% humidity. He can cure these things out in seven to ten days. The average home gardeners like us, we don't have these dedicated facilities, and we just have to use what we got. So what I do, you don't wash them. Now, I know some of y'all is going to want to wash them. You don't wash them because you're going to introduce that bad bacteria. Leave the dirt on. Remove that excess dirt, but you don't want to wash them. And I put them underneath the barn there, and we normally are having temperatures about 85 to 90, 95 degrees during that time, and we normally have high humidity here in the south during that time of the year. So you've got those conditions, but it may not be... You know, at night time, it may drop off, so it's not constant. So it's going to take us a little bit longer. It's going to take us two to three weeks for yeah. them to cure out. And when you're digging them, kind of be careful because they're easy to bruise. They are, or stick the fork through a big yeah. old fine one that you got. Yeah, so be kind of careful. Mm -hmm. Handle them with care so they don't bruise. Mm -hmm. All right. After they after they cure, then you can start partaking in them. All right. Now, pest. Mm -hmm. They really don't have a lot of pest. Uh, Two that comes to my mind is white flies. Mm -hmm. There's actually a white fly called a sweet potato white fly. White flies seem to be bad in a dry year. So if we have a dry year, we can anticipate having some white fly damage, especially later in the year. You can treat those with different mild insecticides. Do it late in the afternoon when those white flies have settled down. You get real good coverage there. You can keep them under control. You're not going to eradicate them, but you can keep them under control. Flea beetles as well can be an issue. Treat them pretty much the same way. Just make sure you get good coverage. And it doesn't take a real strong insecticide to kill them, but you got to go after them pretty regular with good coverage. Okay. And then, after you've harvested them, these things will store up to six months or so. Mm -hmm. Leave them in that barn with your potatoes and your onions. And garlic. And your garlic. And there yeah. you have it, folks. You, you got see it. A grocery store right there in your barn. Yeah. And just like with your tom onions, you got an everlasting supply of potatoes every year that you can save your stock and move on with. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you like to eat them? I like to eat them as a dessert. Now, everybody's and post in comments below how you like them. She likes to sweet potato fries. My dad likes to sweet potato fries. I won't eat sweet potato fries. All right. And I like the yams. Ah, okay. Your, your favorite is the souffle. Souffle. I love the souffle. Want, I eat them as a dessert. Right. You, if I fix sweet potato souffle, you won't eat it with a meal. You save that for your mm -hmm. dessert. Now, I will take it and bake it whole. I do that and eat it with butter and cinnamon. But not as a meal. Not as a meal. I don't want it messing up my tater, my other taters and my okra and stuff. Yeah, I don't want to mix all you that. You want to get little roasted pecans? Roasted pecans, also maybe some raisins and marshmallows, all that good stuff. Yeah. 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 So if you have any favorite sweet potato recipes, post them in the comments below. Mm -hmm. yep. Maybe I can convert him to eat them with his meal. Mm. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Mm. So the question is, where can you buy your slips from? Mm -hmm. We don't sell them at the time. We may next year. Got a cucumber there. That's a good cucumber. What'd you put on those? Some uh, garlic some cabbages, mm. some olive oil, yep. and some honey and ginger. Um, 
something. So? I just, whatever I could. Whatever you had, you just poured in there? Whatever I could reach in the cabinet. Where do you buy your sweet potato slips? There's a couple places online. There's one called Tater Man. He's up in Tennessee. Don't know anything about Tater Man. He's got a pretty nice looking website. I have had some customers that have told us they bought their potatoes from them. I really can't give you a recommendation, but I've not heard anything bad. Also up in that same neck of the woods is Steel Plant Company. I do know those guys personally. That's Larry and Ken. So they are great people there. They've been selling sweet potato slips for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So that's two sources right there that you can get your sweet potato slips from, get started. So in Georgia and Florida, Kent? Georgia and Florida, my best understanding, I actually talked to the guy at the Department of Agriculture, cannot ship plants out of the state. And I do know the other parts of Mississippi and Louisiana and Alabama that can as well. Mm -hmm. So there are some restrictions there. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready for your corny joke? Ready for the corny joke. I have to put my glasses back on. What do you get from a dwarf cow? A dwarf cow? What do you get from a dwarf cow? Not a clue. You had all night to think I, I don't have a clue. Condensed milk. <laughs> that was sent in by Claire Gamble. Claire. That is a good one there. <laughs> we'll get you something sent out in the mail um, for that. That was pretty good. Speaking of that, how about the old goat? So if you have never watched our show before, there's an old goat on the set here somewhere, and he's hid a lot of times. And so it's maybe, not him. And it's not me. He's mm -hmm. peeking out somewhere. And if you find the old goat, you simply send in custard at hostools.com. No, 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 no. Just comment on the YouTube. You just comment. and then, Okay, then if we draw your name as we draw every week, then we need your address. Yeah. And you have to send that in to custserve at hostools.com, and we'll send you a gift. So this is from last week. From people that found yeah. the old Yeah, if you comment on Facebook, if you do send in the customer serve, we'll include your name in here. You ready? Mm-hmm, I'm ready. Quite a few entries there. Yeah. All right, Aaron. I'm gonna let you pronounce his last name. <laughs> Baritas. Aaron Baritas. Can you get it right there? Here we go. Aaron, send your information, your shipping address in to Hoss Tools at, excuse me, customer at .com. And we'll get you something in the mail. What kind of cucumbers are these? I've been really pleased. That's a new variety that we don't have out that they send us oh. to test out. Yep. It's a good one, though. Mm -hmm. That's yep. what I did all my pickles with. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us. If you've not grown sweet potatoes before or they interest you, give them a try. I think you'll love them. I don't care where you live. I think you could probably make it work for you some form or fashion. It's a great, great food source. Maybe we've helped inspired you to grow sweet potatoes and give them a try. Thanks for watching, and now it's time for you to get out there and get dirty. <laughs>